Well, just after that Arab League meeting broke up, I managed to have a word with the Prime Minister, Fouad Sanura. I asked him first whether he would got everything he wanted from that meeting. The meeting was very good and uh, the way it was discussed, it uh, presents uh, real solidarity to, to Lebanon. Every single country is uh, standing behind Lebanon, with Lebanon, and uh, the team that has been chosen to go and defend the cause of Lebanon is, is very good. Uh, I am confident that uh, the, uh, the, all the Arabs, all the Arabs are in support of Lebanon. I am confident. But there's been criticism within Lebanon that until now the Arab world have been too slow to help you. As I said, uh, I mean, there are some people that might say that some people that are not aware that there has been a good, good deal of contacts and uh, coordination and pressures that were exercised by the Arab countries throughout the past period. Nevertheless, and I, to me, I look at things always forward. Looking at the past really brings nothing. So now I, I believe that with what we have achieved today is a serious good step forward. So can there be a ceasefire until Israel withdraw completely from the whole of Lebanon? This is what we are working for. This is our Including objective. The Shabbat and, Shabbat. Yes, and this is what we believe that ultimately is in the long-term interest. If the Israeli leaders look at things, it is in their interest. And with no buffer zone? No buffer zone, no buffer zone at all. They have to go behind the blue line and they have to go leave, leave Sheba Farms. Sheba Farms is not Israeli. I mean, they say so. What, what they are doing over there? And this is con keeping the situation uh, uh, really uh, uh, not stable. And it's not, it's not in anybody's interest. So what's the role of the Lebanese army going to be from now on in? The Lebanese army can and will play a very important and effective role in, in, this, in this process and in all the seven points. Ultimately, the Lebanese army and all the Lebanese official uh, uh, forces, they are going to prevail all over Lebanon. This is the objective and we are working on the, towards that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Fouad Senior talking a little earlier to Robin Denslow. Well, meanwhile, the Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert made his own direct plea to Israelis and to the wider world on television this evening. I know you all think that we are fighting against Hezbollah. But let's face it, the state of Israel is fighting against the Iranians and the Syrians who are using the Hezbollah in order to attack Israel from the north. This is a very difficult war. I spoke to the Israeli ambassador to the UN, Ambassador Dan Gilliman, and asked him if his country was in fact at war with Iran and Syria themselves. Well, it is very clear that the Hezbollah is the proxy of both Syria and Iran. Iran's president, who keeps denying the Holocaust while preparing the next one, has made it very clear that he wants to wipe Israel off the face of the map, and at the moment is, is using that very long arm of his to do it, to try and do it. Does that mean you will fight directly with Iran and Syria? No, at the moment we're fighting with the Hezbollah and uh, we regard this as a very, very important fight, not just for ourselves, but for the civilized world as a whole. This is part of the war against terror. And we believe that because this is a global threat, not just a local threat to Israel, this should be dealt with by the international community and not just Israel. The Arab leagues have said uh, no resolution is possible whilst there remains one Israeli soldier on the ground in Lebanon. Can you see that being an area in which you would be willing to negotiate with the UN resolution? Well, the UN resolution was actually achieved after a lot of work and goodwill by the United States and France, two countries who have in the past actually brought about UN Resolution 1559, which called not just for the removal of Syrian forces from Lebanon, but for the disarming of Hezbollah. And it is aimed at doing exactly that. So I'm hearing that as a no then. In terms of the UN Resolution, you would not negotiate on that point, i.e. leaving Lebanon uh, without an international force being there first? I don't think anybody in his right mind, and I'm not even sure that the Arab League truly believes that it would be in anybody's interest for 
Israel to leave a void there which will be very quickly filled again by the Hezbollah. I believe that many of the Arab countries who said what they had to say in Beirut believe deep down inside that the Hezbollah is the greatest tragedy of our region. I'm sure that moderate countries like Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and many of the Gulf countries believe that. So I don't think that anybody really believes that the solution is for us to leave a void there which will quickly be filled by the horrible presence of the Hezbollah, which has already caused let's, this very conflict and the suffering to Lebanon. Let's look at the situation as it stands tonight. Your defence minister said you'll step up your ground offensive if there's no breakthrough. Are you ready now to use that to your advantage? Will you intensify the action here on? We, we're not using anything to our advantage. We're doing what any democratic country would do. We're defending our homeland, we're defending our people, and we will do whatever it takes for however long it takes until we manage to significantly degrade the capability of the Hezbollah and create the possibility for an international force to so, come in and for diplomacy and the political process to take place. So no time limit at all. We heard from your Prime Minister just over a week ago it could take another 10 days. Now you're saying however long it takes. However long it takes. This is not something that we, c we can finish in the middle. This is not something that anybody expects us to finish in the middle. When you, when you excise a tumor, you don't stop operating in the middle, saw the patient up and tell him, now live with it until it kills you. This threat and this horrible, monstrous presence of the Hezbollah must be removed, not only for Israel's safety, but also for Lebanon's freedom. Ambassador Gilliman, many thanks.